fan of Spinal Tap. Big fan of Spinal Tap. Speaking of Spinal Tap, um, so last time, what happened? <laughs> last time on Spinal Tap, uh, the group got <laughs> some downtime projects in. Um, uh -huh. Very nice. And, um, yeah. Well, most of the group. Uh, there, there was Kayla went to jail. <laughs> There's, yeah, intense downtime. <laughs> um, many things happened. Um, quite a bit of things happened. Uh, and I will uh, casually forget all that happened. Um, well, Zoaz went out for for a meal and did some work at the Temple of Selene before. It was set on fire by Michaela, who was... <laughs> I mean, Clearly did some research. To... Yeah, I was trying to do a cool transition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kayla was trying to oh, I uh, I get to someone... <laughs> anytime. <laughs> trying to get someone to disenchant the spicy book. Uh, but it was too hot and literally burned them until they became unconscious and then burned the room and then the cops showed up and then confiscated the tome and then Michaela went to the, the police to try and get the tome back. Of all the characters that would get arrested in downtime, I didn't expect it to be Michaela. Imagine getting arrested and not just mind phantasming the police and running. <laughs> Define on fire. <laughs> There were flames. The first time. Tangibility of them is uh, up for debate. Uh -huh. But they were there. Wait, fire is tangible? Sometimes. I mean, not really. It depends it's complicated. On, it depends on how cool you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> it depends if you're a scientist or not. Perceptible by touch. I think that counts as tangible. You can uh, definitely feel fire. Maybe you can. Dang. Hey, you know there's no such thing as cold. <laughs> Just the absence of heat. Yeah. Cold is a lie. Speaking, speaking of the absence of heat and there being no such thing as cold, Twig, what did you do? Literal fiction. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like, what did you do? I just went to the library. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, Twig did some window shopping, uh, some actual shopping, and some reading at the local library. Learned about a bronze dragonborn that was doing some of the same research he was. Yeah. And I think the... Um... <clears throat> The uh, <laughs> the excellent librarian uh, told you that. Mm -hmm. um, also informed you about the head of town was also doing a, a bit of research on the subject. Um, mm. Bufuga. Then, yeah. Bufuga. And then Pastiche? Mm -hmm. Pastiche became a dancer? True. Sure. Pastiche, sure. <laughs> Pastiche might have learned at least one dance. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I would you're... say Pastiche should definitely learned at least one dance. Yeah. Of a you're a dancer? Name every dance. <laughs> well, the dance that was There's the floss. floss. <laughs> this floss. If... I'm sorry, Cody. If, if you didn't learn the floss, then... I don't know. To... <laughs> I, I, I might have to penalize you. <laughs> well, I mean, considering a prior illusion... Yeah. I think Pestige already knows the flaws. Okay, okay, okay. And then uh, Chuman <laughs> attempted to sell sand in the desert. <laughs> it almost worked. Yeah, he came pretty darn close. <laughs> I was pretty close to selling, you know, sand in the desert to a sand connoisseur. The sand uh, connoisseur. And then he went to go... <laughs> And then went to go do some research, uh, and found not 
lot, but he knows about a place that he could try some more information. The capital of Zozo. Yeah. Okay, and then... Zelia had fun. Yeah, Zelia had some fun. <laughs> She tracked down some information about a bronze dragonborn who is totally not the same one that Quill found information about. Totally not. And also uh, spent all her time in the library researching, learning how to fly, and just needs money, which she does not have at the moment. Story of Zelia's life, honestly. I mean, she had a lot of money, and then she just kind of gave it up. <laughs> I, I don't remember what she spent it on, but she just spent it on it. It's like, yeah, sure, I don't care. And now she needs money, so. Hmm. Which is actually, you know what, that is indeed the story of Zelia's life. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's pretty in character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And which brings us to the remaining member of the party who we did not get to last time. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we had to stop too early. And uh, which brings us back to the lovely music of Lampshade. I would like to know what the illustrious owl Mitch wants to do during downtime. <laughs> oh. Oh. Let's go, Mitch. Mitch. I thought it was going to be Coracon. Yeah. Uh, pre preening, uh, preening himself with this lovely new attire that he got from Pine. A little aviator owl outfit. What is, what is Mitch up to during this week? Taking flying classes? <laughs> like airplane flying classes? Yes, of course. Okay. Who's. He signed himself up for it? <laughs> With Fancy Mel. Uh -huh. Well, you guys don't know where Fancy Mel is. M Mitch does, clearly. Okay, you just <laughs> saw her in the queue line. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> who who teach me how to fly? Regrettably, Mitch was turned away at the queue line <laughs> when it was discovered oh, that he didn't have any money. Oh. He has been, he has been <laughs> given the moniker. No bucks, Mitch. <laughs> no bucks, Mitch. <laughs> oh no. Word spreads quickly about no bucks, Mitch, through the the stalls of Lampshade. So anyway, what are you guys doing today? <laughs> <laughs> more downtime, or um, you'll probably have like one more day of downtime um, before. Uh, before Korakon gets out of jail. And by jail, I mean mm -hmm. customs. Yeah. Uh, Zaz would probably be spending his remaining downtime uh, trying to help repair the temple. Okay. Because, you know, he, he felt a little bit uh, involved in that debacle. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll a... Uh... Athletics. You know what? I'm 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 going to grab this one because I I want to do this one. Yeah. So Zayla, you don't get to be random. Sorry. Do it. Do it. You want to do? Yeah. Uh, she wants to research Suit Whisper, like the history, exactly what it does, any sort of stories about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Zoe, has, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, you managed to be rather helpful. Nice. And, uh, getting. You know, settling everything down and uh, fixing some of the, the knocked over, uh, <laughs> um, what's the word? Uh, like knocked over like furniture and desks and stuff through mm -hmm. the hurry. Um, Repurified the water that everybody jumped in. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll say it also costs, uh, like for, to, to represent like the materials and the time, we'll, we'll, we'll deduct 10 gold from you. Okay. Um, but there you are. As you look at the Temple of Selene and wipe the uh, the hard work sweat from your lizard man brow with your forearm, put your hands on your hips. It's a darn good Temple of Selene. Nice. It's a clean burning Temple of Selene, I tell you what. <laughs> the, uh, the, the other staff in attendance. Um, do thank you, of course. So, oh, thank you, so <laughs> uh, Of course, of course. They give you gifts of incense and myrrh. <clears throat> I 
I feel like Faithful to Cell and I wouldn't use Murr, they would just give like milk and wine. Because that's <laughs> what they do. Yeah. You give some incense and milk. Nice. Consumables. Milk. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a minor argument over over how to pronounce it. Um, yeah? It's it's quickly quelled when a Doom Strider shows up. Okay. Thankfully, Zoas didn't have to spend another spell slot on the sending spell to uh, get the, the police this time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Alright. Um, let's see. I, uh, it appears Zalia is ready to go. What, what can we do for you? Oh, that was just roll. That was just rolling to turn what she was interested in, and then getting annoyed because I wanted to do one specific and deciding no, she's gonna research Sit Whisper. Okay, so you want to research Sit Whisper? Um, I imagine that Zelia would first think of the library to do that. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, so, give me Sit Whisper is the topic. Give me Arcana or Investigation, your choice. Well, I maybe have a preference. Alright. 13. Um, mm -hmm. You take a gander at Soot Whisper. It, it, it appears that Soot Whisper is not trying to communicate question mark with you at, uh, at the moment. Well, the other thing is, I, I really want, she wants to look into like, its history. Yeah. Is one of the, uh, one of the, okay. <laughs> Good too. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, so spurred on by its uh, by its silence, you take a look at uh, a couple records, and mm -hmm. it's mostly like anecdotal evidence. Um, there's uh, like you find reports that uh, Soot Whisper is this kind of like transcendental blade that just came out of nowhere, and it's just suddenly one day it was there. Like you, you get like. Uh, like eyewitness reports and like quotes and like it, it killed my auntie and it's like it looked at me weird and then the other one's like I saw ghosts of the past in the blade and there's like an account that seemed to indicate that its initial discovery was punctuated by it falling from the sky and impaling someone's rabbit that they were taking for a walk that day um but overall it's made out of obsidian it's cool to the touch um it's capable, like it's it's documented. It's giving, uh, capable of giving otherworldly knowledge. Um, see Soot Whisper today at Firefinger before you realize you're reading a travel guide. <laughs> cool, cool. Oh, and the other thing to note is, if she sees one of those bunnies, she's gonna look at it with a magnifying glass. Okay. Um. Roll for whatever ability check you think is good to look at bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for rabbit. Roll for rabbit. Yeah. Okay, this is a reasonable one. Alright. Um, having exhausted the tomes, <laughs> uh, you step outside, look around, and you see a a rabbit just like it looks like it's carrying a plate mm -hmm. full of food like on its head okay. um it's doing a very good job of it somehow uh but you quickly pull out your, your magnifying glass and give it a look and you you magnify the rabbit um it is uh overall you know snow white fur in color in color mm -hmm. uh, it's got its beady little rabbit eyes uh, straight ears up instead of bluff eared. Um, uh -huh. And the magnifying glass does something interesting where it, like the, the attachments on the top, seem to very quizzically turn into frog's eyes. Okay. And then it, they go back to. The normal uh, little dragon horns that they got. Interesting. She's gonna minor illusion a frog right next to the rabbit of the same size. Okay. It 
it seems to it seems to pay enough. Like it, it stops for a moment and then just kind of like mm -hmm. you can see its whiskers twitch, but mm -hmm. then after a moment passes, it ignores it and continues on with its with its plate of food? Question mark. All right. Um. So can I? Hmm. Would Thalia be able to put together what I've put together with talk about demons plus frog? Uh, mm. Or is that a religion roll? Roll straight intelligence. Okay. If you want to. Yeah, that sounds slottish to me. Alright, cool. That will be her conclusion. And that's all she's doing for now. Who's next? Uh, I oh. could go. Uh, okay, you can go ahead. Uh, Twig would want to follow up with the um, the leader of the town, Bufaga. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're um, you ask around. Uh, make a survival check. Survival. Yeah. You ask around. You opine the. Uh, the people that are uh, milling around Lampshade, asking for directions to where this Bufuga might live. And um, you just pull somebody aside, uh, saying, hey, where this dude? And they <laughs> they uh, very politely tell you, oh, there, uh, Bufuga, his, his abode is up north on town. Uh, he ain't leave there much recently, but uh, shortly, if you knock nicely, I'll let you in. Right, Twig's gonna nod and thank him, and head up north. Okay. Um, oh, and then also the <coughs> since you rolled an eighteen, <laughs> they'll also kind of <laughs> uh, stop you. And it's like, oh wait, uh, he's got so many visitors coming and going. Um, you might, you look new here. Uh, it's it's the very large lizard man. Is that cool? Just in case there's more than one person in the room. Thank you very much. I'll go see him right away. Okay. Alright, so... Twig, you head up to... the abode of Bufaga, as you were directed. It, it, you're good at following directions. You're good at navigating around cities. Um... The let's see the abode of of Bufaga, uh, the the chief bookbinder here. Um, the outside of of the bookbinder boss's house is something of a burnt orange, and it's stone. It's clearly built out of the cliff that it's nestled against. <coughs> There's like little lights that flicker weakly from the windows. Um, they're kind of dot this, uh, let's see, crumbling facade of the building. Of the building. Mm -hmm. um, there's like vines of ivy uh, that are, when you take a closer look as you're standing outside of it, um, the, the vines are kind of like dark and twisted. Uh, and they spread over the establishment. They give the impression that they're kind of like constricting and tightening on the walls. And then there's a, uh, like a faded and like flaking gold brocade that lays on the uh, lays on the ground. <coughs> um, it, it seems desperate to be admired as it once was. Um, but <laughs> yeah, there you go. You you are standing outside the home. Door's closed. It's this big double uh -huh. door too. Dang. Uh, so he's gonna take the townsperson's advice and. Knock very nicely. Okay. Blump, 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 blump. You knock, then wait a polite, appropriate number of minutes. Uh, there doesn't seem to be an answer. No one comes to the door. Um, Twig will knock a second time a little bit louder. Okay. Knock, knock, knock. 
knock, knock, knock. There's a there's a certain like punctuation on these knocks. <laughs> that, that makes them a little louder. It's like, hey, open the door. <laughs> um, let's see. No. It appears that uh, no one answers. You're not sure. Uh, everyone that you've come in contact has asserted that they don't leave, but they sure aren't answering. Mm hmm. Hey, Rogue, how are you going to approach this situation? <laughs> I want to talk to him, not steal from him. <laughs> you can still break in to talk to him. Are there any windows in the house? <clears throat> there are a couple windows of, of the house. Zelia is, that, is, that, is that being a bad influence. <laughs> okay, you, she's not there. You can't hear her. I, I I can I can hear her spirit. Okay, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, I don't think this would be a Zelia thing to do. This is a me. <laughs> I'm not gonna break in. I just want to peek. Right. Uh, there are windows. Uh, you you can see the like lights flicker weakly, and like there uh, it's like candlelight. You, you can see in there. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, oh, and pick left or right. Uh, right. Okay. You can see into this room. Um, there is a big study looking place. Um, there's many like wooden desks, there's uh, like a little flower pot on a desk, like on a little uh, little desk cloth. Um, seems neatly arranged. Um, many books, many shelves, there's like a couple of armchairs hanging out. Um, you can see a letter on the, uh, on the table next to the plant. Um, sorry, not, not a letter, a journal what I meant to say, and uh, as you peer in, you can see the candle flickering in from the northwest part of this area, um, and between the shelves of books, you can see a very large movement, like a quick movement, as if, uh, like a purposeful movement, but it's, uh, they're, they're shrouded in, um, it's, it's just a silhouette, you know? It's a very stocky silhouette, and larger than you might have expected. In the in the dim light of the candle, you're not able to, to determine what it was, even when they turned to Like amongst the uh, bookshelves? Yeah. Okay. A journal, you say? There is a journal there. Next to a potted plant. It's succulent. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the oh, the rest of the room is overall dimly lit. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, let's see. I guess you can see in the candlelight. You can see uh, two exits. One goes to a northern, uh, like a northern room that is, uh, let's see, that is lit. It seems to have a piano in it. And then there's a northwest exit that has a closed door. Is it like just an exit to the room or like a, another exit to the house? It's another exit from the room that goes to the rest of the house. Oh, okay. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think Twig wants to break into his house. <laughs> Being lawful. Not lawful. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> She's not That's there. It. You, sure, can't, you sure. can't hear her. She's not there. What, 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 twig, what do like, you want to do? Twig, twig, like, waves away the ghost of Zelia on his shoulder. <laughs> like how Zelia has become your incarnation for misbehaving. <laughs> like the, the devil and the angel. Like he's always on one shoulder, Zelia on the other. <laughs> Um, I think Twig's just gonna like, in his notebook, record the, like the location of his house. Okay. And and he'll he'll uh, try to follow up a little later on. Okay. 
Okie dokie. There's certainly some time that you could devote to that when, you know, just give another try. Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> can I get my book back? <laughs> uh, you can make an attempt. Go ahead. <laughs> so Michaela ends up at the um, Michaela ends up at the Dune Strider Barracks. You stand outside. There are many Loxodons about, adorned in their feathery Dune Strider garb. They have their uh, their armaments. They have their wits about them, and they notice you approach. Um. Hail. I guess she. Uh, is that just like? Are they actually trying to like stop me and ask what's going on? Because otherwise, I just want to like walk past them. <laughs> yeah, they're asking what's up. Hail. What, what can we do for you, man? Okay. You can choose to ignore them and just I'm... walk past them if you want. But no, they're, no. They're, they're greeting you clearly. Mm hmm. Um. Okay. Do? I'm here to retrieve. Yeah. I'm here to retrieve the tome you, took, you uh, confiscated the other day. The one that was on fire. Well, I was gonna have him roll a history check, but <laughs> there's only <laughs> one on fire book. <laughs> oh yes, that. Yeah. Uh, it, it caused quite a quite a commotion when it when it came through here. This, everyone was asking about it. What's that? Why is it on fire all the time? Hot to the touch. Uh, even when we. Is it still on fire? Indeed, ma'am. It continued burning, even, even when we withdrew it from the barrel full of water. Quite a curious thing. But if you say you're it's here like to... size. If <laughs> you say you're here to pick it up, uh, I, must, I must tell you it is not here. Uh, we thought it best to have it checked out. Um, we can put your name on a waiting list, uh, when, and we can return it to you. By who? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, uh, can I say that before I came in here, I would have used enhanced ability on Eagle Splendor, the charisma version of it. Uh, uh, you didn't say it. Uh, Only twenty. Uh, all right. Um, it's, it's not a DC, but roll a D twenty. Picking, oh, okay. um, yeah. Just, just roll a d20, uh, but you're you're not against a dc. I'm just picking up a number. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, ten. Okay, <laughs> that was actually a fun number. So sure, <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and cast enhance ability on yourself before, like as you stroll up. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Okay, and you're doing uh, uh, cool. the eagles splendor. Yes, the advantage on Christmas checks. Okay. In that case, roll some persuasion with advantage. <laughs> All right. There we go. 21. 21. <laughs> 21. All right. Um. Let's see here. And your question was just by whom? Uh. Yeah, ch being checked out by whom? Okay. Well, <laughs> since since it caused such a commotion, uh, naturally, uh, word <coughs> reached our uh, the, the, the 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 book bindery, and uh, old uh, Bufoga uh, requested examination of it. You can be sure that uh, he'll take good care of it, and if it is indeed cursed, why he's strong in the arcane arts, he'll dispel it right away, and we can have it returned to you once we acknowledge that it is safe to distribute back to a uh, Satizen such as yourself. Where did I find this Bufagna? Well, uh... 
we'll keep your 21. <laughs> uh, well, mm -hmm. he... Uh, mainly keeps she, her arms are, like, crossed. She looks really pissed off, by yeah, the way. Like, like She's just, like, lady. not happy. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, old lady mad. <laughs> you can, you yeah, can exactly. A, you can sense, like, a shift in the in the Dune Striders. They're like, oh, no, I don't want to make the old lady mad. <laughs> uh... No, they're, they're like they've got their huge hands like out in front of them they're trying to like they're doing the calm down motion it's like now now uh, he he has his abode at the north uh, end of town uh, he uh, I lost my train of thought we'll just say they stopped they there. just said him to <laughs> <laughs> Where, where are they? Where are they? What's, what was the question? I completely lost my train of thought. Just where? Where? Uh, where is this Bufa guy? Okay, apologies. All right, he lives at the north end of town, but um, he's been locked away in his uh, in his abode for some time. He's working on binding a very important tome. You see, it's best that we uh, that we leave him to his work, if you don't mind. So does he or does he not have my book? He does. Hmm. He said to, so he, he, he sent a rabbit to pick it up. He sent a rabbit? Hi. She looks around at the rabbits. Make a perception check. What? <laughs> I mean, she's not looking for like if there's one that has the book, but just like generally what the rabbits are doing in the general area. <laughs> Uh, you you whip your head around suddenly, like alerted, alarmed, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there there may be like a trace of rabbits in the like in the sand, like the little paw prints in the sand, but you do not see a rabbit. Mm -hmm. She like a school winds out the distance, but um turns back. Well, if I, if I'm getting this straight, he's too busy for me to interrupt him finding whatever book he has, but not too busy to come over or to pick up my book and deal with it. Did I get that correct? Well, that's the gist of it, yeah. <sighs> you said north part of town? She doesn't wait for a response, she just goes. <laughs> Indeed, but... <laughs> Uh, well, you can expect your book back within a month's time as you're walking away. <laughs> we'll have it returned. We'll have it mailed to you. Yeah, I guess I'm going to book, uh, trying to find uh, <laughs> okay. Mr. Bofeda. Uh, like the Bufu Bofeda. from Persona, but a gospel from Final Fantasy. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, Heads, uh, you run into Twig on the way there. You cross, pa you cross Get... paths with each other. Mm -hmm. Do we start just walking in the same direction? Well, that's up to you guys. <laughs> Twig is on, uh, Twig is on the return. Like, Twig, uh, you oh, are okay. walking in the opposite direction. Oh, Michaela, what are you doing here? I'm on my way to find uh, Bofida. Get this blasted tome back. The town leader? <laughs> she like cocks her head a little bit, um, raises an eyebrow, like, oh, uh, I wasn't aware that's who they were. But regardless, they have my tome and I intend to get it back. Huh? Hey. I was. Hmm. I was just there a few minutes ago, so I could, I could show you the way if you'd like. Oh, that would be great. As uh, the Dune Striders were. Mm. <laughs> She's like trying to find, uh, like a word. To to incapable just of showing me. <laughs> 
like trying to say it the politely as possible. <laughs> so he just nods and says, I understand. <laughs> I was trying to get a hold of Wufaga as well. So maybe you'll have better luck than I did. Mm. Oh well. One way or another, I suppose I'm getting this back. I guess I went to a good me bad. Okay. So Keeping an eye on any rabbits is on okay, the way. Okay, okay. Um, you do not see any rabbits on the way there. Um, but you do see, as you're coming up on the on the on the bookbinder's abode. Um, it's been maybe like twenty or thirty minutes since you've been here, Twig. Um, you mm -hmm. see, <clears throat> you do see someone leave. And they kind of like close the door behind them, um, kind of like abruptly, and it it like hits the door frame and then swings back open a little bit more. Uh, they kind of uh, run their fingers through their fiery hair and just kind of like look like that for a moment, and then they get on a bike and leave. Um, <coughs> And then you arrive at the abode. You too. The door is slightly ajar, but uh, the the overall description is the same from earlier, Michaela. Mm -hmm. Okay. Except now um, it's like this big double door is just slightly open, parted. It's uh, whoever that individual was neglected to shut it properly or lock it if they have the ability to. Alright, yeah, Twig's gonna... No, oh, Twig, uh, Michaela, sorry, uh, is gonna sort of confidently um, walk on in. Uh, she's gonna <laughs> open the door, and as she does, she says, Oh, well, uh, well, the door was open, pardon. Is there a Bofaga he here? Alright. <clears throat> um, Twig, you're When you step in this, I need you to uh, roll nothing, because nothing happens. <laughs> uh, so you, okay. you you walk in. Michaela rolls on the ground. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Twig is the strangest sight. Michaela just... <laughs> just um, I just do the Willy Wonka, like, walk, cane walk. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, sorry. So you, you stride confidently into this... Uh, you know, past the door, you open it a little side and um, haul your greeting, and uh, there's a, like, you appear to be in some kind of, like, anteroom or, like, um, initial, like, accommodation room. Um, there's a dirty, kind of, like, blue floor mat at your feet for dusting the sand off your boots. Uh, to your right is, like, a coat mm -hmm. hang and a waist bin. Um, to your front, to... As you as you step in, look. There's a there's another door, um, and then to your right, mm -hmm. there seems to be like a book mm -hmm. open to like a halfway point, and it's accompanied by a translucent little amber glass and a quill. Um, I will actually uh, move you there. Oops, not oh. Oops. Uh, Michaela. Uh, it is dark in here, though. You too. Uh, you just barely notice this in the dim light from out, like while the door is open from outside. Um, mm -hmm. There, it is very uh, dark. There's no light. Oh, so here you are. Um, yeah. What's up? What do you do? Hmm. Um. <laughs> Twig's gonna no so I reach in. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna ask if there was any response to the greeting. So Michaela calling, like, sort of calling into the house. There's like a few wood creaks underneath your, underneath your uh, footgear as you walk in. Um, 
Mm -hmm. But you wait a little while. There doesn't seem to be any uh, any response or anything. Hmm. So we just kind of reach into his bag for his uh, star jar and take a few drops of those. Okay. So, uh, Michaela, you watch as Twig reaches into his satchel and he withdraws this uh, star jar, like this jar that looks like it has just glittering motes uh, that reminisce of the of the night sky. And he takes, like, he unstoppers the top and, like, there's a little eyedropper. And uh, he blinks a couple times, looks upwards, and then squirts a couple, like, um, really kind of like viscous looking uh, glitter looking liquid into his eyes and he blinks a little bit and he kind of dabs <laughs> the bits uh, the sides of his eyes <laughs> and then um, and then uh, once Twig blinks a couple bit or a couple times um, you can see that uh, Twig's pupils and irises and like the his whole ocular is now swirling with multicolored motes of light that uh, just kind of like spiral gently in his eyes. Uh, so it, as you look into Twig's eyes, it looks like you're looking into a night sky full of shimmering, sparkling stars. Oh. And Twig, you gained dark vision. <laughs> you can now see. Uh, you can now see uh, 60 feet. Twig's gonna like hold out yeah. the jar towards Michaela, like without actually explaining what it does, just like offering it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela will be like, oh, thank you. My eyes have been quite dry with the uh, air and heat, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and she, not knowing what exactly, she just assuming these are just like eye drops. Uh, just, yeah. you know, fancy eye drops. Uh, you know, gonna. Uh, I guess moisturized irises, as they say. I don't know who says that, but someone does. <laughs> Clearly, Michaela. Michaela, um. Michaela, you, <laughs> Michaela, you moisturize your irises, and uh, mm -hmm. Twig, you also now see the reciprocal um, as Michaela drops a couple of these drops in her eyes, and then kind of blinks back at you. You can see just the, you can see just an entire galaxy in in those eyes, cool. just shimmering like. Like faint reds, faint blues, yellows, whites, and, and she blinks. It is kind of like very, like ever so faintly, just swirl, just the the gentlest of movements in her in her eyes, in her oculars. And then now, Michaela, you can see uh, in the dark. Roll me a one d four, please. Sorry, a one d four plus one. Um, okay, so Twig, you can, uh, sorry, 1d4 minus 1, apologies. Uh, so you both can see for 3 no, it's a hours. Two. In dark version. Oh, no, I have, I rolled a 3, so I have 2 hours. Oh. Look, even yeah. simple math is difficult. <laughs> for real. Sorry. Did you say true? You take that back. What? <laughs> what? It is? Uh, simple math is hard? Alright. <laughs> So, now that you can see, um, what would you like to do in this kind of little entry room? Um, did you mention there was an opening to the right with the, uh, like the open book? Yeah, there is a book open. It's kind of like open to just some pages, like maybe halfway or whatever. Twig wants to check that out. Okay. All right, Twig, easy enough. It is plain as day here. Um, <clears throat> so, so you kind of like take the book, you move it towards yourself so you can read it. Kind of like move, a, move aside the, the little glass and the quill. And uh, it appears to be some kind of guest book. Um, it's written, there's a message written in ink. Um, <clears throat> it says, uh, sorry, it reads, names are precious and it is polite to introduce yourself. Write yours in the guest book if you ever hope to learn mine. a few names kind of like randomly assorted mm -hmm. like some are diagonal because somebody thought they were funny <laughs> uh, 
Damn. Robin Astray when I literally didn't know how the mechanic worked. Listen. <laughs> you shush. No. <laughs> also, listen, the point of being a math major is doing the abstract bullshit up there so you don't actually have to do arithmetic. Yeah, because simple math is hard. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, is there. Twig, Twig's just gonna shrug and, like, in, a, in the corner of the page, just write in small script Twig. Okay. Uh, when you do so, Twig, uh, there's, like, a faint kind of red shimmer from left to right on, on your name. It's just. And you hear a chunk noise from the north. From the from the door, from the mayhap. Door, yeah. uh, Twig is gonna motion <laughs> Michaela right. over to the book. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I mean. I need to. Uh, okay. The Kayla will read it and. Um, no, she wouldn't be clever enough to do anything funny with it. Yeah, she just read her book. Uh, write her name. Okay. Um, the, she'd like, I guess, sign in. Alright. <laughs> There's the red shimmer across uh, Michaela's name. <laughs> no accompanying noise this time. Is there a keyhole on the door? No. Okay. Oh, can the door just be pushed open? Like, can it be opened at all? It's, it's got a... It's got a knob. Can it? Oh. Cool. <laughs> Alright, Michaela opens the door. <laughs> and we'll come back to you guys. Alright. Uh, Pastiche and Juman. What would you like to do? Hmm. Does Chuman have any plans? No, oh, Rise muted. He... And also AFK. Yeah, he's AFK. Does Pastiche have any plans? <laughs> I mean, Pastiche is probably going to take an extended nap. Okay. Hmm. Pastiche naps. They were pretty sore. <laughs> Say you wake up at okay. about uh, early afternoon. It's nice and balmy. Stretch, get some water. Kind of like do the do the lean over stretches. <laughs> do some do some dancing stretches. Hmm. You limber up. Your legs are ready to go, your muscles still still kinda sore, you still have plenty of exhaustion. <clears throat> but it's a lovely day. Alright, well let's walk around and look for some rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh give me a perception check. Sure. Roll for rabbit. <laughs> uh Alright, should it takes you like a, like, you, you go rabbit hunting, <laughs> and it, it takes you maybe a, uh, maybe like half hour, an hour, uh, before you find yourself in the market stalls, just looking around, because that's where you last saw the, the rabbit, well, you know, with, with Pine, the orc, uh, you see Pine, give him a little wave, um, you do not see a rabbit. But what you do here is uh, a very outraged dragonborn voice that just sounds the slightest familiar. It's got just a little bit of a slur. Why scamper? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you whip your head around and uh, you see in his glory 
in his drunken glory. Vera Valge. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing a, a red dragonborn clawed hand in, in our direction. Hmm. It, it appears Vera Valge has been robbed of... Of, of his lunch. Oh, this is tough. Truly a moral conundrum. <laughs> what the Pastiche is going to approach Vera Okay. Silently. You, you, you see, you see him kind of like get a start, and then like out of the corner of their eye, like their peripheral vision kind of like twitches and then they, <laughs> they look at you sorry and then uh yeah then Viva Vibes looks at you then he kind of like takes a stagger and he's like Wah. In what, hello in what, in what mu must be the quickest thinking he's ever done is he points in the direction go get my scampi back uh he whoa. Excuse me? The shrimp scampi! It's the finest delicacy in lampshade! I've been waiting all week to get it! And by golly! A beast took it from me! Stole it right from under my nose! Uh, well, a beast you say? What kind? Ah, uh, four-legged, huge ears, white fur, I don't know what they call it! <laughs> Mangy <laughs> vermin is what it is. Pastiche is going to just kind of look around for a second. Not particularly in a hurry. <laughs> you can make another perception check. Now that you've been <laughs> directed, the situation has changed. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you, you, you look in, like, the approximal direction, but it's rear valve, so you're not too worried. <laughs> There's no rabbit. Well, if you say so. And Pastiche is going to casually stroll in the direction he's pointing. <laughs> your, your lack of urg urgency is met with like a gruff and a huff from the drum, the, sorry, the red dragonborn behind you. And he's like, ah, my scamper! <laughs> Dang. They're just taken from me. Everything just taken from me. The adventurers, these beasts, <laughs> will it ever end? And you hear like a, like a cork pop, like, Oh no. Very loud guzzling noise behind you. Oh, oh, oh. And you casually walk. <laughs> uh, Mitch the owl, who, who lands on your shoulder. Oh. There's a little aviator outfit. <clears throat> He's got like a gold star on his chest. You're not sure why. <laughs> it's like a badge. That's Steve. Is going to briefly lock eyes with Mitch. Look up to the sky. And send Mitch away. Straight up. Dang. <laughs> and it's time for Mitch to look around for rabbits. Oh. I figured... Because of your inclusion of the word straight up, I figured you poofed him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So... Mitch will look for rabbits. Go ahead and, um, <laughs> do you have access to Mitch's token? Yeah. Go ahead and roll, uh, perception for him. Hmm. Um, with advantage, because this is sight. <laughs> there we go, Mitch. Now we're talking. Let's go, Mitch. All right, Mitch rolled an 18, so, uh, let's see. Yeah, Mitch gives you a hoot hoot. In typical Mitch fashion. <laughs> uh, uh, I, f I have suddenly forgot. Can you communicate telepathically for f with your familiar? Yes. Let me double check. <laughs> this is 
description is so long. Long description. <laughs> While your familiar is within 100 feet of you, you can communicate telepathically. Okay. Yeah, Mitch will... Uh, Mitch will tele telepath down. Um, <laughs> target sighted. <laughs> <laughs> Pesich is going to sprint in that direction. Moving to entrap. <laughs> <laughs> Engaging. So as you sprint in the direction that uh, Mitch guides you, <clears throat> um, you suddenly hear in your mind, <laughs> target is engaging in evasive maneuvers. <laughs> <laughs> proceeding to head off and you see uh, you see like you you look up and you watch your owl do just a dazzling set of maneuvers just like zigzagging and zipping through the um, through the air like doing a barrel roll even you're not sure why um, <laughs> but uh, it appears that Mitch has uh, maintained a uh, uh, a, <laughs> a target lock on, on this on, on this quarry. And, okay, well. Uh, pastiche continuing to run uh, in the direction that Mitch is um, guiding you telepathically. Uh, just running after a rabbit. It's difficult, but you're an adventurer. You, and, and, but you're also a little tired. Um, <laughs> Mitch lands on like an awning. Um, and you find yourself guided by Mitch uh, to the north side of town. And um, Mitch like lands on an awning and then just points you in the direction um, of a particular house. It's got like these massive double doors. Uh, they seem to be slightly open. Hmm. Uh, there's like vines that are like hanging down, just crawling up and crawling around this uh, kind of like burnt orange uh, burnt orange like little stone carved abode <clears throat> there's little candle lights flickering uh, from left to right and the rabbit just like sprints into the door well if the doors are open let's follow it back to you. <laughs> uh, has Tuman uh -oh. returned? Yes. Tuman, what would you like to do? Uh, I think Tuman is actually going to take a stroll around. Um, I guess possibly looking for work. Uh, but for the most part, he's just kind of taking it easy. Okay. Um, during your stroll, I will say you, you see Pastiche just walk towards this red dragonborn. You're in the market area, just trying to look for work, asking merchants if they need anything. Um, uh, roll, me, roll me just like a straight charisma check, actually. Backtracking. <laughs> hey, new dice. That's right. New Whoa. dice. Yeah, those, new are, dice. those aren't going to roll, though. If they, <laughs> if they do, they'll be punished. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you you take like the better part of a morning, um, helping just random merchants load and unload, um, and kind of like pedal their wares, uh, build something for somebody. Um, you learn a bit about uh, what it takes to be a merchant uh, here in the great continent of Corsair. Um, learning lingo perhaps and your services are new tangled as your as your cut of the of this fair share of merchants. Nice. Um, and then probably around like in the afternoon you your eyes land on pastiche who seems to have a chat with a familiar looking red dragonborn who 
familiarly f familiarly looks drunk, and then Pastiche <laughs> saunters off towards the north before you can see him break off into a run. Uh, I guess Chuman gives. Do, do can I actually hear the Red Dragonborn for him at? Uh, yeah, he's definitely very loud, very brazen. Um, and they're griping about a shrimp scampi dish that they've been waiting for since forever because it's apparently like a high, <laughs> a high commodity here. Um, and it has been stolen th from them by by a beast, uh, by by a great white beast with four legs and long ears and snow white fur. Mm. And then later they, you know, they start griping about adventurers and Okay. I'm doing this just for me. Doo -doo. Ah, so, Jumin actually remembers. Uh, he kind of thinks about the white rabbit that was mentioned in the beginning of the downtime. Uh, so, and you mentioned that I, I saw Jumin, or not Jumin, uh, Pastiche run off. Like full uh, Shuman is going to try and see if he can follow. Okay, that's a survival check because you're a tracking creature. <laughs> Easy. And I assure you, Pastiche is a creature. Not Easy. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Pastiche is definitely a creature. Black creature. Yeah. La creatura. Yeah. Pastiche is a creature, and by golly, you know how to track creatures. You also know. Creature how to pride. <laughs> You also know how to track pastiche. They have a like a certain gait about them, and they have a certain uh, way of like moving themselves around that you've come to learn in your time of adventuring with them. Okay. And by golly, you catch up with you not only catch up with pastiche, <laughs> but. But you, uh, in your natural tracking and maneuvering around the city that you've spent some time, you know, getting to know, uh, you kind of assume and, like, kind of triangulate where pastiche is going, where they're going, um, and also kind of, like, the means of how they're getting around. And you get the sense that pastiche is being led somewhere. They're not, uh, they're not making their own way. They're getting, like, they seem to be following, like, directions given to them. Uh, and, but yeah, absolutely. You you catch up with Pastiche, and uh, you're maybe like a couple yards behind them before uh, Pastiche stops, and they look up at this large uh, stone carved abode, and then go in and open door. And behind them, Mitch the Owl flies in and lands on their shoulder. What would you like to do, Chimmin? <laughs> uh hmm. Chuman's gonna give a look around before uh walking in. Okay. Sure, give me a perception check, please. What are you looking for? Uh It's looking to kinda see if anyone is uh, kind of paying attention to Pastiche, since he's been running around. Okay. Uh, uh, if anyone's kind of looking suspicious or something like that. Sure. An 11. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. The coast is clear, so to speak. Um, there are people milling around. Um, it's not like an empty street, so to speak. Um, but it's also not full either. There's maybe like two or three people just kind of maneuvering around. As you're looking around, you know, Pastiche did get some heads turned around. But once they stopped moving, people just kind of went back to minding their own business. Um, that's about it. Okay. Uh, so then Chuman is going to walk in and see if he can follow... Or at least catch up to Pastiche. Alright. We'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
which brings us to uh, back to Zoaz and Zalia. What are you uh, What are you guys doing around this time? It's in the afternoon, bright sunshiny day in Corsair. Uh, I apologize. I believe I was away when Zalia and Zoaz were met up. Okay. Yeah, Zoaz, we didn't meet up. Yeah, Zalia and Zoaz are not met up. You were, oh, just, okay. <laughs> you were just the only remaining two that that are not with the rest of the party. I mean, Zalia is probably going to just be in the library continuing research stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Zoaz would just be chilling outside the temple. You know, people watching, perhaps. Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. The people you watch is pastiche as he's full sprint. Uh huh. Across yeah. the <laughs> if. Oh my god. Yeah, that, that's actually what happens because where the temple is. <laughs> so, so I watch pastiche sprint. Uh, like down the street, basically. Yeah. Not, not like in full view. It's, it's uh -huh. like you see pastiche, like like or you see a figure that looks like pastiche, like this a, a snake lizard man, and it's, it's mm -hmm. like past an alleyway. It's like is that? But it's someone just like full urgent sprint, and you can see um, you can see Mitch the owl in the air as well. <laughs> okay, so I see so Mitch, and I see someone numbers. that looks like pastiche. Yeah. Hmm. So, sent to sending. Uh, or using sending, Zoas is going to ask Pastiche, uh, is everything alright? <laughs> I have to catch it. <laughs> I love how Pastiche doesn't even, like, do a double take at being spoken to in in their brain. <laughs> Just another day. Just another day. Uh, it's on a mission, man. I think Zoaz is going to start following at a speed, like following Mitch as best as he can, without uh like sprinting or anything. <laughs> Like, he's, he's not going crazy. He's not, like, running or anything. Maybe jogging. Alright. Nice brisk pace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hear the, uh, metals. Any, anyone in, you know, in on the streets can hear the, the two moon metals on his back jangling and clinking. Sure. Clank, clank. Jangle, jangle, clink, clink. Alright. We'll come back to you. What's Zaylia doing in the library? Delia. Delia. Oh, there we go. I was muted. <laughs> um, yeah, assuming it's the same day, she's probably still researching Foot Whisper. Okay. Um, let's see here. <laughs> you need another um, Arcana check or Investigation check, your choice. Just need to do... Well, again, she's a lot better at one than the other. <laughs> on my screen, that was like just the most lazy roll. It was like bloop bloop, <laughs> bloop bloop. Yeah, same. <laughs> All right, uh, a fifteen. Okay. Um, while you're in here, just taking more time to research. So we're not satisfied with just a travel guide. Uh -huh. Like surely there must be something else here. Come on. <laughs> Some kind of account of like what it's what it does, sort of deal. Like right. just something. Yeah. Um, you. Do pour over mo uh, more books, um, mm -hmm. just looking at just anything that might be an account on Soot Whisper. Um, <clears throat> regrettably, we don't get anything on Soot Whisper, but you do find uh, information on magical weapons in general. Uh, Secondary objective, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so looking at this, like settling for this, he plopped down in a, in a seat, um, set the book on the desk, and you begin reading. And... Um, you find some interesting information. Um, overall, like the theory behind magical weapons 
and and like other magical items in in Corsair and in this in this universe in this world anyway. Um, uh, there are some enchantments that are woven like onto the armament um, and are just faint auras that harbor like a latent magic trigger when commanded to do so either by special passwords or through the act of swinging something or striking something or like being struck or something like that. Um, and then there are more powerful instruments that have been documented to seize an adventurer specifically, uh, seize their consciousness. <coughs> Though it seems to be only striking to those capable that are, sorry, those that are capable of attuning to the magic of the world. The, these people are given a vision of the origin of the weapon, um, and the vision typically either projects tragedy or triumph, um, or can even display like the creation circumstances of the legend that is enchanted or woven into the, the magical item. Um, and then alternatively, the vision could display like the previous owner's tale and the ordeals that the weapon and the wielder saw. Uh, then after completing the vision, it's noted that the adventure and the magical item seem to be on the same wavelength. Um, and then, like, breaking away from this, uh, this attunement seems to take some time and concentration. Uh, and that's as far as you get before a white beast jumps on top of the table and kind of just, like, takes a couple hops towards you. And the book that the you gonna. Azalea's gonna make her face frog-like. Okay. <laughs> you do this. The book that you're reading is accosted by this rabbit. It, it like, kind of, like, nibbles on the, on the pages, like, tears mm -hmm. it away, and then just, like, does another one, and then another one, then it just, like... Thalia, Thalia may chance the book. <laughs> And I hold it above the rabbit, like several feet above. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you do hold the book above, um, but the mm -hmm. rabbit. Uh, by the time you uh, quite realize what's going on and weave the incantation to get the mage hand out, the rabbit has accosted maybe like three pages of paper, and it's got like it's got them in your mouth, and it's the, it's the pages that you haven't gotten to yet that promise more information, um, and it's just got it in its mouth. And it's What would she do? Do I have a spell that would be funny here? <laughs> um, she honestly might minor like minor illusion, just like a, a box around the rabbit that only opens towards her, <laughs> and just like ready to grab the pages as it runs by. And the box will like have a sound like flump, like it got it just you know okay. feels like it actually just got dropped on it or something. All right. The rabbit does, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is predi predictably startled, and uh, it runs for it out of the the only opening. It's a rabbit, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then like it, it kind of like it does, it does like the, the it doesn't have traction animation. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and it just, like slides out of the. Uh, of the thing because it's just so startled. Go ahead and make a make an athletics check to grapple the pages from the rabbit. <laughs> athletics check, huh? Yep. I mean, have you ever tried to grab a rabbit? It athletics does... check, huh? It does take some <laughs> athletics. <laughs> what do you want? Aww. Aww. The rabbit will now roll acrobatics. <laughs> Incoming that one. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> only one die face over. Oh. All right. Oh. The the bunny scrabbles out of the way, just no traction, and kind of like falls off of the desk with a flop, and then okay. and then it bolts out. All right. She's gonna before as, before she can. She's gonna try to phantasmal force it and put it like Ooh. put it put in its mind that the pages are on fire. And it needs to drop them immediately. Its mouth is burning. <laughs> the okay. noise you made. <laughs> Thomas, it's okay. Heckin' <laughs> Phantasmal Force doesn't always do damage. Yeah, I know, but... Alright, let me get a... Let me get a red That's Jason, that's bunny for a week, oh, man. No, wait, no, bunny, here we go. No, I 
Such a distressed noise. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you were the one being put on fire. Maybe I was. Bunny. Can't believe Julius is everybody. <laughs> uh, I can. TC15 intelligence or how smart is rabbit? Yo! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my no, god. No, 18 minus 4. Wow. <laughs> so close. This is almost the most intelligent rabbit of all time. Rabbit I will say, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't drop the pages, it will it will actually take the damage. Rabbits have an intelligence of two, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's almost right. the smartest bunny you could tell. Alright, so it's... Uh, let's see here. So it does... Oh, one moment, one moment. Let me double check, make sure that I have the correct bunny. Is this the correct bunny? That is the correct bunny. That's that's the correct bunny that I'm using. All right. Yep. <laughs> it minus four. It needed a natural twenty. Well, a, a natural or nineteen would have done. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. 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 That's, that's, <laughs> um, yeah, so this money skitters some more. It's like, <laughs> and the uh, the papers kind of like scatter off of its mouth. Um, <clears throat> and where is uh, where is Soot Whisper on your person? Uh. It's gonna be out on her hip. Okay. That being said, she is gonna gather up the papers and straight up just hiss at this bunny. And she's gonna do like, you know, the nastiest hiss she can imagine. Alright. As as you get up, <clears throat> the uh you hear like an unsheathing sound, like metal on metal. Uh -huh. And uh as you go over to hiss at this rabbit, that is now just kinda like flopping around <laughs> and trying to get back on its startled feet. Uh, as at this, it's, it's at this time that you realize that you are accosted by a second bunny, uh, and it has just purloined Soot Whisper from you. Oh, and it equally, well, that's bad. <laughs> and it equally Why? dashes off. Because Zalia. <laughs> that bunny's dead. Oh! Bunny's fine. It's just the bunny. Have mercy. It's still Soot Whisper. Well, a toy. It's so <laughs> bunny. Bunnies don't weigh very much, right? <laughs> uh, how much does a bunny weigh? Uh, bunnies are, let's see, we'll say five and a half pounds. All right, we're gonna mage hand just grab the bunny and pick it up. <laughs> By the scruff of its neck. Okay. She's not that rude, <laughs> but it is. It is lifted. It lifted in the air and held. <laughs> uh, let's see. Will you put Mei-Chan in the chat, please? Bunnies versus Zelia. <laughs> Say you can use the hand to manipulate an object. Let's take it like. Sure, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> um, you'll uh, mage hand the. You'll mage hand on the rabbit. Sit uh -huh. back, and then uh, as you get the mage hand out, uh, uh -huh. it, is an, it is a further action to uh, control the hand. We'll say the rabbit gets like almost out the door uh -huh. with your uh, with your armament before you use the mage hand to <laughs> to arcanely grab it. Uh -huh. And it's just kinda like hanging there in the air. Yeah. She's gonna walk up. She's gonna 
take her knife back, and then she's gonna look at this bunny with the rabbit with the magnifying glass. Okay. <clears throat> it is. Uh, it does have the effect of changing the horns on the magnifying glass to frog eyes. Mm hmm. You get the sense there's something screwy around the. <laughs> yeah, does she? Um. The thing is, Azalea at this point thinks that the bunnies are actually the demons that uh, the bronze dragonborn was referring to. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. You don't know. And the issue with that means it's okay to it's okay to hurt a demon. Oh no! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Did I take Consult Whisper? She, she's got it back. But now she's uh -oh. like, okay, this is a demon. It's clearly trying to fuck with me. I should probably, you know, fight back. <laughs> well. Okay, so what are we doing? I'm just here. imagining Zelia's Mage Hand doing the Metal Gear Rising Zandatsu. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so basically, at this point, it's just the Mage Hand is going to corporealize into a skeleton hand that just does a, little, does a crushing motion, essentially. No! Well, go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Against the rabbits! <laughs> it's probably an actual fucking demon and I'm about to die. <laughs> In the library. <laughs> and the music changes. What better place to do it? <laughs> 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 Alright. <laughs> Let's see here. So you've got... Uh, one rabbit here. Let me uh, let me un untranslucent these tokens here. Uh, da -da -da. So, you can, so you can see what you're battling to the death with. <laughs> Good song. Uh huh. Alright. The rabbits will also roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a surprise round, by the way. Um. No, well, well the rabbit's not surprised. It's clearly in danger, and it's it's in fight okay. or flight mode itself. <clears throat> okay. The rabbit, and it's the, the rabbit that you have held in your mage hand, um, uh -huh. just hold on, is going to just it's flailing around. It's going to uh, claw out with its uh, little rabbit attack. A 12 thing. No. Okay. Why does it have a horn? It's, it's an all <laughs> I don't know it's if that's a mirage. I to attack. Yeah, oh, well, I, I figured you did. Um, it's just like, it's just the stat block of another, like, of an actual bunny. Yeah, I fi oh, okay. But with a horn. But just, it's another bunny from something else. They just happen to have horns. You realize it now has a horn. Okay. <laughs> it, it grows like this spectral horn and then tries to like headbutt you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely like maneuver yourself backwards, seeing this spectral horn come about. Uh, the second rabbit at your feet, uh, it suddenly swarmed by more rabbits. Oh, and more the rabbit swarm. And more rabbits. And soon there is a venerable like infestation of bunnies. And the librarian owner is nowhere to be found, but there is now a swarm of bunnies to be found. <laughs> <laughs> and they will roll initiative. Can you imagine if Pat oh had encountered this? <laughs> uh, this rabbit's gone. Swarm of rats! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, that is swarm of rats. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask you to uh, to uh, blink and rub your eyes. It's swarm of rats. <laughs> yeah, there's a smudge on your magnifying glass. It's actually. Mm -hmm. That's its turn. Go ahead, Zelia. Okay, so she's actually gonna try to crush this rabbit with the the chill touch. Oh yeah, the chill touch. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll attack. A thirteen. Thirteen. A thirteen is its armor class. That so it hits. <laughs> yep. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, wouldn't it be one d eight or two d eight by this point, by the way? Uh, yes, it would. Yes, Okay, it's still two D eight. It's still two at one D eight in the thing, so I'm just gonna roll that manually. Jeez. Where'd the fuck? Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it said plus four when I. It's just two D eight. Yeah. It's a spell. Okay, so it'd be eleven. Okay. The rabbit is destroyed. How would you like to destroy the rabbit? <laughs> Again, she just crushes it. All right. There's a <laughs> noise <laughs> as the uh, the mage hand uh, is spurred on by the chill touch, and then the rabbit kind of like goes into gore everywhere. It's it, it's oh. it's an unfortunate sight for this rabbit. Ayla's gonna like look kind of confused. She was not expecting it to go down that easy. You're in a library. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the demon! Control. <laughs> the... The some 15 rabbits are now going to attempt to bite you. <laughs> As oh, they no. spring over your ankles and just nip at your ankles and your shins and your and your knees. Like, some is, like, just jumping up and nipping at your elbows as you're, uh, as you're commanding the mage hand to crush this rabbit. Uh-huh. Does a 20. Oh. 20 does hit. Wow. Uh, eat piercing damage. I did not want to take a rest, I want to take damage. Yep, she takes that. Not fun. And then the uh, rabbits, like all of them, as they're undulating over your feet and ankles uh -huh. and just nipping at you and, and biting and just uh -huh. headbutting you with their spectral horns, suddenly they uh -huh. all stop and then like near caught up on their back legs and look uh -huh. around. And then they all bolt out of the door. All right. Zaylee is just gonna kind of stand there, confused. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna make sure she has all her stuff. Okay. Uh, that's an investigation check because you're investigating yourself. <laughs> all right. seems all accounted for. Uh, you sheath sh soot whisper, uh, but you do notice the pages of your research on the floor are gone. Uh, <laughs> you recall hearing parchment noises from the, the veritable sworn of rabs. She's mad. She's starting. She's gonna start running. All right. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so as the rabbits are bolting out of the door, um, and. It took you like a few seconds to, to search and make sure uh -huh. that, you know, pat yourself down, make sure that you got your stuff, and then before you notice that the, the papers are gone, um, you also run out and you see like just 15 pure snow white rabbits just, just stampeding in the direction of the north uh, uh -huh. through a, uh, <laughs> uh, through a, um, uh, what's the, what's the word? It starts with a C. What's the name for the for the road for the type of road? Courseway. Yeah, through the courseway, and there's maneuvering over people like hopping, like <laughs> they spook a raptor, uh, knock over a fruit cart because of course they do. Um, uh -huh. I need a. Uh, there is a my cabbages in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I need a survival check from you, uh, with advantage because you're you're fighting it as you. Oh, sorry, that was with advantage. Yeah, roll I one more time. Blank. Uh -huh. Hey, a 15! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you chase after the swarm of rabbits, and uh, you you do indeed hear, My, my cabbage! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you spot one, uh, just kind of like turn around, grab a cabbage, and then turn back to keep up with the <laughs> <And> <laughs> You uh, 
um, continue hopping off. Boop, 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 boop. And uh, for the... Oh, there she, she's back. She's back. In the interest of time, <laughs> you know where this is going? Yeah, she'll probably get there last, inevitably, but... Yeah. In the interest of time, we'll jump to the... Uh, as Zelia is um, chasing after these rabbits that now have at least three pages of her research and also a cabbage, um, this Zelia just trucking it after... Um, after the swarm of, of rabbits through the streets of Lampshade, we return <laughs> to the party. Uh, we'll go ahead and activate this scene now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first, let me make sure... There, end combat. Do I get XP for... <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a joke. <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> cool. You do get experience for it. You will be slightly ahead of levels than everybody else. <laughs> I get to level five seconds before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the rest of you, uh, Twig and Michaela, when you come in, the music changes. Um. So as Twig walks over, like writes his name in the um, in the guest book. Michaela, you write your name in the guest book. Uh, Michaela, uh, you and Twig share a glance, <coughs> and you uh, look at each other with your uh, starry universe eyes. And Michaela just shoves open the door, and uh, ahead of you is a large room. Um, there's weathered blue rugs um, on the floor that stretch all the way north um, to a to a um, like a, a doorway. Sorry, not a, not a doorway. Um, just a, like a, a portal to another section. It's an archway. Um, and then all around the room positions strategically are wall candles. Uh, with a chandelier above to illuminate this main room. <clears throat> um, as you walk in, there are hey, baby. two decorative uh, suits of armor uh, that are that stand vigil here, flanking you as you enter. Uh, there are many exits to this room. Uh, there's an east. There's a there's an east door. There's a southeast door. Um, there's uh, an exit to the north that seems like it immediately turns a corner, and you can maybe see like a railing, like a hand railing, and then there are uh, two exits to the west, uh, one like a northwest and one like a um, like a southwest west, <laughs> and then there is fi a, a final exit to the southwest. There's many doors in here. It looks like you're in. It, it, you get the sense that you're in the center of this building. Mm. Uh, Michaela, to, as he walks in, looks around, and just sort of, uh, kind of loudly, um, exclaiming, um, like, okay. "Hello!" Uh, the door unlocked itself when we checked in. Uh, we're not trying to intrude. We're just trying to find if anyone's here. And then she say, "All right. Well, now that we've uh, disclaimed to that." I think we're free to look around that room. She says to the twig in a much lower tone. Maybe. Why are you such a lap cat? Yeah. I mean, she currently has just stolen my entire arm, and, Good. you know. Mm hmm. <laughs> Getting attacked by rabbits and cats. True. <laughs> it's not uh, your day. I'll say there. Uh, as you call out to the room and to the to the home wait a couple moments as you just meander around um, there isn't a uh, there isn't a response but uh, as you begin looking around go ahead and roll me a perception check 
Just Michaela or Don't both of us? Mind if I do. We'll say both of you. Or or one of you can roll with advantage. Cool. I think I'll let Michaela handle this one. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Twig, uh, you're... Maybe a 27 sees a couple things. <laughs> Twig, you're, you're momentarily distracted as since you peeked into the house through the window, um, you're trying to ascertain like where your your views were. Um, uh-huh. You kind of get the idea that the southeast room might be might be where you peeked in through the window just based on the layout. And then Michaela, um, you don't really like hear anything other than the creaking of the floorboards beneath you um, it seems like the floor is uh, poorly upheld like the there, there's a bit of a yeah. sink whenever you take a step um, something like that uh, and you notice that there's a that there's a, a fireplace kind of smoldering to the west um, that kind mm. of thing. Hmm. What would you like to do? Guess. Um... Yeah, as sure. You're, as you're, as you're Sorry, yes. Uh, a rabbit mm-hmm. sprints by, just skitters in the room. You hear the sound of like claws on on the floor, and just bloop, 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 and the rabbit just scoots, and it disappears to the north. Oh. <laughs> like you, you see, it, uh, as it's <laughs> yeah, it, it is for an instant, and just. <laughs> Um, but um, if you want to cast speak with animals, you can. Now that you know that there are rabbits. Sure. There. Yeah. Uh, Michaela would seeing the rabbit would cast speak with animals, the, the rabbits, and say, I guess in rabbit. Um, wait. Uh, pardon me. Come back. Don't go. To <laughs> like yell towards the rabbit. I think the way I want to do with speak with animals is like you just talk in your normal voice, but they, but whatever animal okay. you're speaking with, um, just understands you. Got it. Fair enough. Um, okay. And then you, you I'm say this to the twig. You, you hear Michaela call out to the critter. You, mm-hmm. You see me cast the spell and then call out to it. Does your speech sound like? Common or does it sound like common. rabbit speak? I think it's just common. <laughs> it's yeah, just okay. really common. Yeah, the, the way I want to do like speak with whatever thing is you can still speak in common or whatever language you like, um, like whatever la- from among the ones you know, of course. And then uh-huh. um, like this, it'll be understood. Yeah, it, it'll be understood. Yeah. Okay. Because it's more like you're communicating a concept. Hmm. Hmm. Did I see where, like, which door it went through, or like where? It went through the it north. Ran towards. It, it went through the north exit, uh, not through a door. Oh, okay, that space. Yep. So it just like ran straight through the room. Got it. Uh, yeah, Michaela, knowing that rabbits are believing that rabbits are doing the bidding of this person, it's gonna help chase the rabbit. Okay. Around this time. Uh, you <laughs> you hear down that, uh... <laughs> around this time you hear noise from the room you just uh, exited from uh, from the from the entry room. You hear some footsteps, and uh, like you hear some footsteps and kind of like some some uh, heavy breathing and <laughs> maybe some some wings flapping. Uh, but before you can turn around and see who or what it is that is making this sound, the door closes, like slams shut, <laughs> but just, well, not really slams, but it closes with a thunk. And pastiche, hello. <laughs> you are now in this, this kind of like entry room. Uh, you see, you, you saw the rabbit just bolt through this door 
and then the door closed behind it. Uh, it seemed like a pretty solid close. Uh, there's just a dirty blue floor mat beneath you. Uh, there's the door ahead, just, just walls, uh, kind of like orange stone walls around you. Uh, you can see sort of like a coat rack and like a waste bin, and there seems to be a book that is uh, open on a desk to your right as you come in. Can I see any of that? Don't you have dark vision? No. Aren't you, aren't you a lizard man? No, it's Zoad. I think that it is. I, I get mixed up because Zoad is a lizard man, but he's also a mm -hmm. That's yeah. why I keep getting mixed up. Zoaz no, and I. It's dark. Um, you can see. You can see just barely, um, because the door is open behind you. The okay. The light from the afternoon sun is peeking through, so it's it's dim light. Sure. Um. And like next to the book is like this translucent little like amber glass and like a little quill, uh, and then that's what you see. All right, that's all very cool, but Pastiche is going to <laughs> rush the door <laughs> and attempt to barrel through it. And and what? Oh, barrel through attempt it. To barrel through it. Okay, you rush the door and in one motion twist the doorknob and slam your shoulder against it. Go ahead and roll athletics. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> stop him from burning man. Okay. Uh, roll me a um... No, never mind. Don't roll me anything. <laughs> <laughs> you uh run up, slam your weight against the door, and uh, it kind of like bows in, like cartoon-like. <laughs> it makes this awful cacophony <laughs> that Twig and Michaela hear. Uh-oh. Uh, and against all odds, Pastiche, you know you definitely got it at a good angle. Um, Judging from your, uh, from uh, from experiences and like teachings and stuff, um, that kind of maneuver should have taken down this door, but it did not. Oh no! Twig, hearing the noise, <laughs> going to check the door, <laughs> see that it's locked. Okay. It is locked. <laughs> Pastiche is going to take a very brief moment to kind of recuperate, take a breath, and then knock on the door loudly. Yeah. <laughs> nice sound <laughs> effect. <laughs> <laughs> Quietly as possible. So he's going to go up to Michaela and like motion towards Michaela's the archway. Like, <laughs> Like, yeah. And just like, just sort of like walk away. It doesn't be underneath it. Kind of like hide behind it. Okay. All right. It's like, about look this behind. time that. Uh, oh, go ahead and roll stuff for me. Uh, if you two are hiding. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's about this time that. The okay, uh, is like, we shouldn't be. <laughs> about this time that Chuman walks in. <laughs> Hi, uh, Chuman. You see Pastiche, uh, kind of like rubbing their shoulder. You see a uh, a door that seems to have taken a hit, like a physical bludgeoning hit, and you see everything else that I've described in this room as well. What would you like to do, Chuman? As Pastiche uh... stands there, <laughs> they are now like banging on the door as you walk in. <clears throat> yeah, they're still going. Uh, Chumin is going to uh, walk up and kind of say, Sir, uh, Pastiche, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Pastiche whips around quickly. Ah, Ch Chumin, fancy meeting you here. 
I was just, uh, following a friend. What are you doing here? Huh. Well, I've been chasing you this entire time, my friend. You've ran across the entire marketplace. Oh, well, why didn't you say anything? Did it look like you had a chance to respond to? <laughs> you were quite quick on your feet. Yes, I suppose I was in a bit of a rush. Uh, anyway, can can you do something about this door? I could certainly try it. Uh, and Chuman walks up and then tries to. He first uh, tries the doorknob, see what how, what it what it feels like. Okay, it you jiggled in a little, like little jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. It's it's stuck. Stuck, like as you turn it, it gives a bit of resistance about where a locked door would. Uh, Chuman is actually gonna try and, or no, Chuman is gonna look over to Pastiche and, and says, "Oh, uh, have you seen anything come through this door? It is locked." Ah. Uh. Yes, just the friend I was following. The bunny, I presume. The what? I figured you were chasing after the bunny. Uh, after the... Our good drunken friend was in the marketplace shouting about. Ah. Uh, so... You heard him then. Yes, the, the rabbit is my quarry. Mm. Friend. Well, I could try, but it seems like it's a lot of... with a locked door, I mean, outside of breaking it. And... Schumann asks uh, for Pestiche to step over, and he tries to see if he can break it. Oop. Okay. Pestiche obliges. Uh, you're just trying to. What are you? What, what are you doing? What is the method that you were doing? Chuma uh, like takes a step back and see if he can just kind of like charge with a shoulder. Okay, roll me an athletics check. Okay. Um. Cool. Yeah. So you take a couple steps back kind of limber up, roll your shoulders, and then rush up against, ha! slam up against this wooden door. It, it holds strong. Twig and Michaela, you see just another slam <laughs> against this door. I turn towards Twig and sort of whisper, uh, whoever's trying to break in here, I do not, I don't think it'd be a good idea for us to be in the same room. Um, perhaps we just head in, deeper in, and hopefully find someone to warn them about the intruders. Uh, Twig just silently mm -hmm. nods and starts heading down the stairs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to, let's see. Uh, to complicate matters, <clears throat> as you run directly mm -hmm. after you nod, Twig, like, as you, uh -huh. as you finish the motion to come back up from the nod, you hear some footsteps creaking to the west. So as you're, <laughs> as you're looking out towards the, the front door, it's to your right. So it's, it, well, here, I can just ping. It's over here. You hear some, like, heavy footsteps pounding some, uh, like, pan pounding some wooden steps. There's huge creaks. And... The the doorknob begins to turn. Quick I can't there. hear that from our spot, can we? Um, no. Just the footsteps. No. Like the doorknob in the other room, like uh, over over here. Uh, no. It's, or the, it, the doorknob. It was like west. over. Here. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Um. 
Um... Hey man, it's gotta look over to pastiche. Uh... Give it to Iganola. It's like, wait. <laughs> I'm afraid unless uh, this is picked open, we're we're not going to get through to something like this. Mm. Well, I can't say I have no experience with lock picking, but I don't have a lock pick on me. Hmm. Two things happen. <laughs> after this exchange. Um, sorry, we still have our stealth rolls, right? Yeah. Twig, yeah, me and Twig. The situation. Just want to make sure, okay. Um, sorry, three things happen. Oh. <laughs> nice. Uh, three things happen. The first one that happens is uh, the music changes. Um... So as the doorknob turns out, what pulls themselves is uh, out like between the doorway is uh, Twig and Michaela. You see this. No one else does. Is a very mm -hmm. large, uh, <sighs> corpulent, scaled, like gives the feeling that this is some kind of like, like they give come some kind of like repulsive aura. Um, it is positively the largest lizard man you have seen. Um, overall, kind of like frog-like. Um, they've got like that yellow kind of um, like little throat belly stuff. They 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 mm -hmm. squeeze through the doorway, walk to the center of the room, kind of look around. Kind of look around. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can see them kind of like squint, and then they they look upwards and then say to seeming seemingly no one in particular. Make sure that if there are any people in here, I hear some suspicious knocking. If they get in, make sure. That either they don't leave, or I'll bring them to me. And they seem to be talking, like, upwards. As they, uh, stand in the middle of the room. And then... They... these heavy creaks. Heavy footsteps. They, uh... Um, as you guys kind of like... Uh, Michaela and, and Twig, as you creep back around the corner and trying to peer at their backside. It's actually an interesting thing where as they stand next to the candlelight, they seem to have these red colored um, shapes or markings or uh, perhaps their tattoos all over their upper torso. Um, their upper torso is bare and they appear to be wearing like this long skirt robe that looks like it was torn from the top half. Um, they kind of twirl their finger, their first two fingers around. Um, there's this little blue shimmer against this door, and then they open, um, they open it, and then exit. The third thing that happens is, Zoe shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so as you, you see Pastiche, Mitch, and Juman uh, in this room, kind of looking stymied by this door, this wooden door, um, and the uh, areas as, as you've heard me describe elsewhere. <clears throat> And I just realized Zalia is not here, so there you are. Yeah, she'll be probably be the latest. I'll just put your little token there. All right. Oh, uh, I can I can see things. Cool. Zalia, Zalia just kind of briefly scans the room. Just sort of conversationally, says, uh, "Hello, you two. Where exactly are we?" Zuman turns around. Hmm. Says, ah, Zoas. 
I assume you were following Pastiche as well. Ah, well, Mitch more so than Pastiche, but, uh, yes. I see. Well, I haven't the foggiest clue of this place. Maybe Pastiche does? I am not sure where we are, but I was chasing a... He pauses for a moment. A, a criminal this way, and they bolted through this door, which I am unable to open. Chasing criminals is, uh, not something I expected from you, Pastiche. Well, they stole something from an old acquaintance. So as raises a scaly eyebrow. Uh, I see. Well, uh, I suppose we'd have to get it back then. Uh, that that is the thing. It's this door. It is locked, and there's there's no breaking this door down. It's fairly shut tight. Well, I wouldn't say that too confidently. But, yes, the two of us were unable to break it. Pestiche looks at Zoaz expectantly. <laughs> Zoaz looks at Pastiche. Pastiche's tail kind of beats the ground a little bit. For <laughs> half a second, Zoa sits there silently, and then he says, If you plan on asking me to break this door down, I think you've sorely overestimated my <laughs> my abilities. Hmm. That's disappointing. Well, do you have any ideas? Uh, I think in the meantime, uh, Chuman is kind of looking around the room for any clues or anything for the door. Okay, make a perception check. Okay, Twig. The way I see it, I think it'd be best for us to try and stay hidden, stay low. <sighs> And then my wait enough time where it would make it seem reasonable that we wouldn't be the people trying to break into this house. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it is an improvement. Um, <laughs> um, Twig is just gonna. Twig nods to Michaela. Oh. With an agreement, but doesn't say anything out loud. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think Michaela would, like, try and continue down the stairs. <laughs> Alright. Juman, you look around this room, uh, there's nothing that jumps out at you as, like, this is a clue! <laughs> it's obviously this! Um, but what you do see is a, like, a coat rack. Um, there's, like, a waste bin, or... It's, it's like a tall, open cylinder. Um, what else is there? There's a desk. There's a book on the desk. There's, um, there's like a glass, kind of like amber-colored vial. Um, you nearly missed the quill, but because it was kind of like tucked under, um, under one of the one of the pages. No, sorry, no, uh, kind of laying on one of the pages. Uh, I think Juma will walk over to the desk. Alright, All right, so yeah, you you see this desk. Looks like there's a book and there's with a quill resting on one of the pages. Uh, I'm... Before, I can't give you more than that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do Wait. at the desk? Uh... 
I was going to see if you could look at the book, see yeah, whatever contents is in it. <laughs> you absolutely can. Um, the book it appears to be a guest book. Um, you can see it easily in the dim light that's showing from the outside. Uh, it has a message written in common. It says, sorry, it reads, uh, names are precious, and it is polite to introduce yourself. Write yours in the guest book if you ever hope to learn mine. And uh, you just kind of look around, scan, a few, like just a few of the names. Um, you notice that Twig and Michaela's names are on here, in addition to a few others. Okay. Uh, I see she's gonna kind of approach while Truman is checking out this book and peer over his shoulder. Uh, Truman mentions uh, apparently Michaela and Twig have been here. So I suppose we may try this to sign in our names to go through the door. Well, I don't see why not. Zoaz? Zoaz uh, has been intently focused on the door, jiggled the doorknob, I assume got got no headway. Yep, jiggle jiggle. It's, it appears to be locked. Uh, the doorknob sorry. stops turning at that particular point. Okay. Uh, Zoaz steps back. Sorry, I, uh, I did not catch that. What did you say? Uh, there is a guest book over here. Apparently, Twig and Michaela have both signed in. And, in the well, they aren't in this room. In the meantime, Chuman is writing his name in. Okay. And you were chasing a criminal to a spot that Michaela and Twig have somehow been in? Uh, of course. So. <laughs> Uh, Zoaz kind of tilts his head and is going to examine the uh, the book. I assume he sees what what Chuman saw now with Chuman's name written in. Yeah, so Chuman, as you write down, as you use the quill, dip it in the ink, and then write your name down, Chuman. Uh, <clears throat> you see, you all uh, see Chuman's name kind of flash with this red shimmer that kind of jumps up from the page a bit, just whoosh, and you hear a ch chunk from the north section. Hmm. Uh, as the flash happens, Chuman take, takes a step back and then uh, looks at the door after hearing the chunk. Uh, and he just walks over to try the doorknob. Okay, it opens. I, I must say... So as here's the door open and turns, this uh, this does not seem to be the sort of place that a criminal would. It seems to be a very inhabited household. I sincerely doubt that a criminal would hide here, especially given that they would have to write their name in the guest book to get further in. Oh, so as you worry too much, Pesty says as they <laughs> follow Chuman through the door without signing their name. <laughs> okay. Chuman, you go through the door and it closes behind you in, in uh -oh. Pastiche's face. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I see. <laughs> Pastiche turns around. Is that actually... Oh, sorry. You turn around and you see Zoa's arms crossed. His yeah. tail swishes across the floor. <laughs> he says nothing. <laughs> Pastiche. Walks right by Zoaz and signs their name in the guest book. You hear it, chunk. I suppose in the meantime, Chuman just kind of walks in the middle and kind of looks around the room. Yeah, Chuman, you see like many candles. There's a chandelier above you that's lighting the room. There's a like a decorative looking sets of armor. Um, there's a uh, like a burnt out fireplace to the west. Uh, there is an open door to the west, um, and then there is no door to the north, and then there's many doors around you. But yeah, 
this one's open, and then there's no door here, but it clearly like leads into a corner. You can see like a hand railing. Uh, as as Pastiche pr approaches the door, they turn to Zoaz and say, If you aren't concerned with getting our friend Scampy back, then that's your prerogative. Zoaz, <laughs> like, his stern face just like, he's clearly trying to hold back a laugh. <laughs> what? Pastiche turns the doorknob. Okay, Zoaz is readying an action. Okay. <laughs> as soon as Zoaz can see into that room, he's going to misty step into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Okay. What pastiche doing? <laughs> open the door. Alright. Uh, as you open the door, Zoaz, you misty step in, just can place yourself anywhere you will probably like right here uh, yeah like, uh, he wasn't like? aiming very carefully he was just going in as soon as he saw the opening okay uh you see Juman and you teleport to a spot directly in front of him uh, passes you suddenly in a wispy shimmery um kind of like moonlight fog you see zoaz just step out um, slightly above the, the floor, just kind of land. As yeah. They're just taking a step down. Um, and you walk in at this very moment. Um, let's switch over to the other side. Um, real quick. <laughs> Twig <laughs> and Michaela, um, as you are maneuvering around and you, you head down, like there's stairs. Uh, up and then there's stairs up again leading to like a hall stand with a decorative mm -hmm. cloth on it There's a door to the west next to the hall stand um, You don't see the rabbit, but you do see a Okay um, You do see a door The twig hears the door um, the voice and the door opening from the other room and he wants to get going <laughs> Yeah, you do hear the door Okay, the, yeah voices We're, yeah, if we're like going upstairs. Yeah. I feel like. Well, how. How loud are y'all being in the. They, what is it, 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 foyer? This is kind of like. Kind of at the same time, like as. as this is just before mm -hmm. they enter. So. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Then if I hear them. Yeah. Kayla's just going up. Stairs go we'll, Twig. We'll, we'll catch up the timeline in a moment. Escalating. <laughs> Twig's gonna carefully try the door. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's locked. It is. Mm -hmm. right, without missing a beat, he's gonna pull out his thieves tools and try to pick the lock. <laughs> Roll me some thieves tools. Twenty-three. Dang. Pretty good. Pretty good. Right. Yeah, the... So, Twig, you, you oh, kneel down and so you uh, unfurl your batch, uh, your kind of little pack of thieves' tools, and you get your file and you get your lockpicks, and you kind of move in with your lockpicks, and it's interesting. Like these, the locks seem—it's unnatural. Like it, it, it seems like it's evading you. Uh, like the tumblers shift around as you come back to knock up another one and, and move around and kind of get everything into its clicky place. Mm -hmm. But not to be outdone, you, you trick the trickster <laughs> and you, you kind of like sneak an extra tap uh, into the tumblers and you get a satisfying ka-chunk. Um, and you believe you've unlocked the door. It takes you maybe like a minute or so to do this. Uh, what would you like to mm -hmm. do? <laughs> uh, Twig's gonna motion for Michaela to follow and step into the room. Okay, cool, I need a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, like, as this is happening, kind of like puts a hand to her forehead and just kind of like 
sighs in resignation, I guess, of like... <laughs> she wasn't trying to break into this person's house, but here they are, breaking into this person's room. <laughs> There's a there's a pink flash of just from the from the door. You don't feel anything. You don't feel different. You don't think different. You don't like look different. You, you haven't been attacked or anything, but you do notice this flash of bright pink light. But the door opens, and then at this point in time, uh, Pastiche, as you are maneuvering through, uh, fifteen criminals come in and just mm -hmm. zoom past <laughs> and then uh, they get into this main room and scatter <laughs> there are now 15 rabbits in this room they're all going every direction um, I'll say the majority of them go through the open door to the west and through the, the no door to the north and then some of them seem to like scatter and like, like skitter under and like slide underneath uh, doors. There appear to be little bunny holes that these creatures can maneuver through. Um, so we get the effect of something like... <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and behind them is Zalia. <laughs> uh... We'll say, Pestish, you have not yet, like, closed the door, just, and you're probably, like, peeking for more, <laughs> for more rabbits. And okay. You, and you see Zalia. Zalia is fucking snarling. She looks like a, <laughs> she's like a frog, but her, the, the eyes have, like, teeth on them. <laughs> oh, God. Cool. <laughs> She Where did the you... fucking rabbits go? <laughs> you saw them exit through this north door, and then you're not sure. Um, you go. She to... runs in here and looks around very quickly. You go to enter the north. She has door. so with her out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go really? to enter through the north door, and it closes in front of you. You run into it. Oh. Stabs it with so with her. Make it a sack roll. <laughs> Um, do I have that actually set up? I don't think I do. You, you can just click on the dice icon on the Soot Whisper in your inventory. Chumin <laughs> just missing. Right. Chumin just asks, I was like, what's that? <laughs> like, what's that? Zalia? Okay. Uh, I believe so. It seems she was accosted by the criminal too. Criminals. Right. If that one like, missed it. That one around. missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so now empty room. Doors have an AC of 10. Uh, so, like, you, you carve so whisper into it, and then uh, you just, you're making all sorts of racket, just, but you're not able to, like, get, like, a good spot, but huffing and heaving, you do it. <laughs> you make another try as Pastiche and Chumin are talking to each other. Just, was that Zalia? And then you you do get a good, like, chunk of, of this door. Go ahead and roll damage. For the, for the sake of funny, can I say the blade goes straight through the door? Yeah, I was thinking like, a, like a, the Shining, here's Johnny. No, yeah, like, here's Johnny. Yeah. Here's, here's Alright. Okay. Zoaz hears Oink, and whips his head around and, and sees. See, you see this massive, like, obsidian dagger blade just <laughs> slam through straight to the hilt of the door. So as <laughs> leaps backwards, probably not into Chumin. <laughs> you know, looks around, having the the rabbits have scattered, and says, I, I, uh, "Is is this the criminal you were talking about?" Chumin <laughs> <laughs> catches Zoaz as he jumps back. <laughs> Testes like approaches have the they blade, just... kind of inspects it. Zaylee is trying to wiggle it around right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it wiggles. And, uh, Rattling. Yeah. Chew, when you inspect the blade, it, it's... Uh, give me... No, that's... I'm not going to make you real perception. Uh, it, it's made of uh, obsidian. Like, it's this dark metal. Um, you've seen blades made of obsidian before. It's, it's very well craftsmanship, this one. Strangely familiar. 
Oh, yeah, it's a whisper. <laughs> Pastiche turns to Zoaz. <laughs> no, no, this is not the criminal. This is Zalia. <laughs> Zoaz tentatively mm -hmm. leans forward to try and get a better look and realizes that it is indeed Soot Whisper. <laughs> and just. Zalia's gonna pull it out and stab again. Nice. Oh my god! Don't roll damage. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so it flinches backwards again when it- when it- <laughs> punches through the door once again. As the second stab happens, Tuma mentions, uh, we- we should probably mention... to her what she should do before she breaks this house. Zayla, you've managed to carve Quite a, like puncture or quite a few holes in this door by now just jamming it hilt jamming it hilt jamming it hilt uh give me a wisdom saving throw okay fuck i misclicked <laughs> okay uh you, you hear in your in your brain this scratching whisper sensation you don't understand the words but you understand the, the concept and the feeling and it concept uh, of love <laughs> predictably <laughs> says uh you, you understand that what the whisper means here's josh <laughs> <laughs> i mean okay if is gonna start like just you know sins and questions of who the fuck is johnny but <laughs> like just <laughs> Casting like 17 million different potential traits for Johnny at once on a response. <laughs> but. <laughs> yep. There's no answer. Mm -hmm. Alright. What would you like to do? <laughs> Alright, if you could just say anything before she stabs it again. <laughs> uh, give it another try. It seems you're making progress. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a shell talked. <laughs> Chumin, Chumin looks for a moment, and then uh, yells out, uh, Zelia, uh, you signed your name on the book, you, you'll be able to get through. Natural one. She's mad. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Well, Zaley, you managed to carve and like puncture and punch through. The Soot Whisper is a strong weapon. <laughs> and it is like, as, as you uh, have encountered already, it is also at least a little bit of magical in nature. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and roll another 1d4. Plus, uh, okay. Uh, 1d4 plus uh, 6. Hmm. Alright, as you as you're carving through this door um, and just slashing wood, splinters go everywhere. Uh, you also like some of the door seems to waste away and like just recede back, like like as if it's being breathed in away, and it's just and you uh, you burn like a hole in the door with your slashing and your piercing, probably as big as your upper torso. Like, you can be seen clearly through the door, and you see <laughs> Zoaz and Chumin and Pastiche and Mitch. He's going to basically put one leg through the door, slurp through the rest of her body, then pull the other leg through. Okay. <laughs> Zalia has defeated the Would door. Would we be able to, like, yeah. Would we be able to hear just like a door being chopped? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the thunk, thunk, thunk. So Twig and Michaela. Uh, as you enter this room and you begin looking around, um, you've.
discovered a study <laughs> with with loose sheets of paper everywhere. They're like they're scattered over the desk. They're across the floor, and it seems like a stack of papers to the right has just unfortunately toppled and dashed more sheets on the floor. There's a few books here, and there's uh, here and there, and there's like strips of leather and hole punchers that make up this room overall. They're just hanging out on on this. Uh, to the right, as you enter, is a bust of Egypt and Lady. But you appear to be in some sort of study. Piecing <laughs> hierarchy of stone. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Well, we said full stealth, but she. <laughs> Kayla didn't just walk in and shut <laughs> yell that she was here. Now, okay, um, probably at this time. Um, the, the time it took for Twig to defeat. Like the evading tumblers, um, you were you guys were probably here for several minutes. Um, it is at this point as you walk in, you hear like you know how when you're just out in the world, the sounds of a, cat a, a catastrophe happening sound much different <laughs> <laughs> than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear uh, Twig and Michaela. You hear just something bad happening <laughs> in, in the main room. Like the, the you hear like wood splintering, wood creaking, thunking, uh, thunking noises. Maybe a shout. Maybe a shout. Some voices. <laughs> some snarls. Well, I, th I think Twig just closed the door. So yeah, I think we're right? hearing down here. <laughs> Twig, Twig whispers to Michaela. I don't know what the leader of this town is like, but there's something seriously wrong with him. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Well, I don't want to be... <laughs> it looked big and mean, and I don't want to be anywhere near whoever's trying to break into this house. You would also, by the way, here. you'd also probably know that Vela is, like, visibly bloodied on the legs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think a study is a great place to hide, but I suppose we'll have to do for now. Good twig, like, uh... But while we're here... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Good twig, like, scan the room and see if there's any, uh, anything interesting or any escape routes. Yeah, there's... <laughs> I mean, there's many things that are interesting. There's the the bust to your right of well, it looks like a human lady. There's the the many papers. There's a desk. There's a, you know quills. There's books. There's all sorts of papers. There's all sorts of books. There's a, like an unlit fireplace. I mean, it's whatever you decide is interesting in this study. So we give a quick look over the uh, papers on the desk. Okay. Give me an investigation check. I need a wisdom saving process. Oh no! Oh no! I'm gaming. Oh, <laughs> All right, Twig. As you Twig gaming. Um, let's see. As you walk forward, uh, check out the the smattering of papers that are on the desk, and you bend over and touch one. Michaela, I also need a wisdom saving throw from you. <laughs> okay. Natural oh, 20. Natural 20. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, as you, uh, so as you bend over and touch one, there is a, another bright pink flash. Um, and then, Michaela, you notice that it comes from the eyes of the... Uh, the bust of the human lady and like there's a photography so, like a camera sound like a uh. <laughs> and um, like it's that kind of noise and then there's a bright pink flash and then uh, Twig I need you to roll me a d10 please just a plain d10 straight up d10 you're getting minted down to the blockchain okay oh no <laughs> <laughs> alright uh, <clears throat> you feel like something has happened to you and that you might mm -hmm. not be in complete control of your actions but you manage to like you're, you're just kind of like standing still like you're like you feel like <laughs> you're, you're collecting yourself and just thinking about 
what's going to happen. Um, like kind of that feeling like where you're really sick, like if you feel like you if you move, like, something bad's going to happen. Uh -huh. If you stay still, you're fine. Um, and you manage to collect yourself for a little bit, and you can you can move and act normally. Like you can do whatever you like. Uh, but Michaela, you do notice that something has happened in this room. Uh, <laughs> um, is there anything like visibly wrong with Fake? Make a perception check or an arcana check, your choice. Uh, well, you said visible, so better. just go perception. Okay. Uh, you look at Twig, and he's kind of like blinking his eyes. His eyes are still starry, by the way, but like in mm -hmm. your well traveled nature, it gives the impression that he's seeing spots, and he's got his hands kind of out next to him, his wings. He's looking around. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks like there is something afflicting him. Like, he doesn't look normal twig. You also see a rabbit carrying a... <laughs> uh, it just kind of, like, hops out from under the desk. Just boop, boop, hippity hop. And the rabbit oh. kind of, like, is seems to be carrying just, like, a plate with a meal on top of its head. It's doing a remarkable job of keeping it mm -hmm. balanced. Yeah, I... Yeah, um, I think... I think... Wait, how long does Speak With Animals last? Is that... T uh, ten minutes. So Ten you're probably, minutes. You're probably at the end of it. All but right. It's still well, on, but you're, at, you're probably at the end of it. So on, sure. Yeah. It's, it's like, but, pardon me. Excuse me. Wait. Hello, rabbit friend. Uh, like kind of make a persuasion. Try it. Like crouch down. Roll me, roll me persuasion. Okay, or animal persuasion. Uh, that's gonna be a persuasion. Okay. For sure. And I still have my Eagle Splendor, because hey. that lasts an hour. Oh yeah, that's uh, concentration. Let's mark you as concentration. Um, 21. All right. Uh, the rabbit slows, but doesn't stop. Uh, and you just, they communicate back to you, uh, <laughs> busy. Oh, it's dangerous out there. It's, it's dangerous down there. I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> They appear to be intruders breaking into the building. We try to hide. And fast. Hmm. Where hide? No, I was saying, as she said, like, we were just. We're trying to, like, point as she'd, like, gesture to Twig and herself. Like, we're just trying to hide from them. You can see the gears turning in the rabbit's head. Okay. I wouldn't go down there. I don't think it's safe. Um, roll, me an, uh, roll me another persuasion. With advantage that you have, of course. Another Dang. 20. Oh. I am rolling tonight. <laughs> The, the okay. rabbit with with this this meal on a plate, kind of like balanced between its head and its back, just mm -hmm. looks at the door and looks at you. Okay, I wait. <sighs> but must deliver soon. Hungry. Mm. Okay, well, uh, she's like crushed. She's like kneeling down, um, very pretty close to the rabbit. Just like, um. So where does your master happen to be a large frog looking lizard man? Twig roll me a detail. With red tattoos on his back. <laughs> Counting down. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh, you're fine for now. Um, but if hits one, you explode. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the rabbit, uh, you can see now, like, the rabbit, uh, Snow White Rabbit has, like, a little spectral horn kind of emanating from its forehead, and it's, it's balancing mm -hmm. this plate. It looks like, it looks like it's got some seafood on it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's shrimp scampi. <laughs> and, um, you ask a question, and it gives you the affirmative. Yeah. Uh, 
liver. Oh, Twig, you get a. Um, I have more things up to the hands, but roll sorry, another wisdom saving. Twig. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, man. And roll me one more d10 while this conversation is taking place. Literally, duality of roles right now. Okay. Okay, let's stand back. Oh, <laughs> uh, Twig, you, mm -hmm. you you freeze up actually, like uh, in your trying to maneuver yourself around, uh, you just freeze up, like you, your your sight kind of like blurs a bit, but you still can see. Uh, but you can't move, you can't force yourself to move or anything like that. You're kind of frozen there. Um, could I still speak? Yeah. Alright. Twig's just gonna haltingly say, Michaela, something's wrong. <laughs> 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 what, no. One moment, Twig. She's like, yeah, she senses the spell running out. So she like, put up like a finger, like, hold on one moment. <laughs> Would you be able to, is there any way, uh, <laughs> is there any way for you, uh, perhaps you two, like, there's like a, this thinking, uh, for us to get to your master without going through the main foyer? Or perhaps bring them to us? <laughs> She's like trying to ask the rabbit. Sure, food. <laughs> and then she'd like try and say something else, and then the spell ends. <laughs> Twig, give me another d10. <laughs> what was a Twig? I, that was a 1d1 <laughs> minus. Oops. Close though. Close enough. <laughs> Actually, you're, you're, you're still struggling a lot, Twig. Uh, there's like there's something befuddling you. You're you're trying to move, like, but you're you can't muster the force in your muscles to make a movement. You, you can't like. It's like you've lost control of your body, but make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh boy, a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Cody, you need to get new dice. Yeah, I, I think mean, it's time you change it. The dice shop is right there in the settings menu. It's <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. I got this. <laughs> but do you ride the dice all the way through? All right. uh, so, we'll say at this time, you guys are now on concurrent timelines. Whoa. Cool. So we're going to move back over to the group in the main room. <clears throat> what would you like to do? Uh, as a review, you've got many candles um, burning and just positioned around. They're lighting up the room. Uh, there's a chandelier above you. There's an unlit fireplace. There's the uh, two kind of like decorative suits or armor. There's lots of exits. Uh, there's an exit <laughs> to the north. There's an exit to the west with the door open. Um, would would we have heard any kind of commotion from any direction? You can uh, after the well the, from the south yeah, probably after the scratching. Well. Um, like after the the rabbit scratching has calmed down, any guys collect each other and kind of look around and listen. Um, you can hear... Give me a perception check. Sure. Give it to while I'm at it. Yeah, uh, one person can helmet and then give advantage. Uh, I'll, I'll let Schumann helmet since Pestiche was very focused on the door. Right, uh, Schumann, go ahead and roll with advantage. Got you. Cool, 15. Um, Chumin, you uh, set Zoaz down out of your arms, <laughs> and then look around at the rabbits, and then just focus your keen hunter instincts, 
and you listen. You just give a good listen to the home that you're in. You get a vague sense that, like as you're <clears throat> as you're walking around, the floor kind of sinks. Like it, it, it creaks and bends as you maneuver around. Um, so like something about the load bearingness of this thing is, is off. Um, you can hear, with a 15, that's pretty good. You can hear some muffled conversation to the north. Um, you're not able to make out what they're saying. It's just, you can, you can confirm that it's two voices. Um, to the east, you can hear heavy creaking as there's footsteps maneuvering around. Um, and you can, you can hear one, um, one voice that you're not familiar with. Um, it is a bit louder. Um, you're able to kind of like hear the tone through the walls. It's a slightly higher tone. Um, but you're not able to make anything else specifically. Um, but you do realize that it's a wonder that no one has come to check on all the noise here that, you, that your group has been making in this middle. Right. Uh, you said the heavy footsteps was to the east? Yes. Okay. Uh, hmm. Chumin is going to speak up. <clears throat> if you all are a little more calm, it seems as if there's... It's quite odd that no one has came yet today into the room after uh, Zalia's uh, attack on the door. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. Bailey is going to snap her fingers, minor illusion bunnies, and just kind of question mark where. <laughs> well, uh, we're not entirely sure where the rabbits went, but if no one has come to investigate your uh, assault on the door, then surely anyone in here is more afraid of us than we are of them. Hmm. Well, I heard some heavy footsteps over to the east. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but there was uh, some voices from the north. I intend to go check that out. Uh, so what, what will you all do? Bailey's just going to start stalking around and meet, like, she's just going to go to the first door, which looks like this one. She gets uh -oh. the knife again. <laughs> <laughs> she then puts a hand on Zoras's shoulder and says, uh, you might want to try and help calm her down. Zoras uh, looks at Chumin. And there is... It's not fear, but it's like... You're telling me to go calm down someone with a knife who just tore down a door? Chumin has almost the exact same look. <laughs> Though I've looked at Pastiche. Pastiche looks to Zalia. Looks Chuma around the room for a moment. Chuma mentions well. Oh. <laughs> and Pastiche just starts heading towards the first open door he sees. <laughs> While this is happening, uh, Twig and Michaela. Twig, give me a d10. Uh, okay, same feeling. Uh -huh. And uh, Twig, give me a wisdom save as well. I think in the middle, I'd like to win. Oh, yay! All I gotta do is do, you know, get some new dice. I did just change the dice, and then I got a d20. I got an extra funny. Same. You gotta put those dice nice. in dice jail. Mm -hmm. uh, so Twig. So yeah, the killer like turns to you as you as you stand still and just take deep breaths. Try to center yourself, blink a bit, and you feel this uneasy feeling 
weird, confusing sensation leave your body and manage to bring Twig back. You, you blink a couple times, <clears throat> and uh, you're there in the study. There's Michaela next to you, uh, standing next to a rabbit, and uh, there's many papers around you. What would you like to do? Uh, leave, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was what was that you were saying, Twig? Michaela, I think we need to get out of here. I don't know what it was. I think Some, the... Something just came over me. I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. Something in the bust, but I think the only way out is I'm pretty sure through the foyer. Wait. They are. <laughs> Take shutters. I don't think Vela is actually that right. pissed off anymore. She's gonna try other doors oh. first. Sorry. Michaela is gonna like open the door a crack and like try and listen down the <laughs> through the hall. Make a perception. See if she hears anything. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, a ten. Um, as you open the door a crack. Um, you hear, like, a, a bit of chatter. You're not quite able to make out what they're talking about, but you do hear some names. And the names are Zelda, Zelda, Pastiche. And uh, the, you, you sense a familiar, like, a sound of the, of the, of these voices. So you could be your friends. Okay, I'm going to make... A oh, wisdom check. Why? Oh, it's just what Michaela thinks. Okay. <laughs> Michaela's Darn. good at thinking. Uh, <laughs> she is good at thinking. If she, if that was gonna be a ten or below, it was gonna be. She thinks they're chasing, like they're chasing after us. Okay. All right. <laughs> but no. Um, I. It couldn't be. Why would they? Twig's like about um, to crawl into the fireplace and he turns around and says, couldn't, couldn't be what? Stay there. I'm going to check. Uh, I need to see. Just try and get a quick glance at who these people, who these intruders are. Uh, and she's going to as stealthily as she can. Like, oops, uh, open the door and go down uh, the steps. Okay. You stealthily go down the steps, creeping down, um, and as you round the corner, you almost bump into a mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, you're, you're creeping down, like, moving around, and then... Mm -hmm. There they are. <laughs> as in pastiche as you're rounding the corner. <laughs> okay, what are you doing, basically? <laughs> Suddenly, here's Michaela. Uh, uh, pastiche! Uh, uh, she like kinda like hisses quietly. <laughs> what Michaela? What are you uh, what, uh, what is wrong with your eyes? <laughs> On hearing this, Chuman turns and heads to the door. <laughs> or the open area. Yep. Uh, the, the group is reunited. Uh, yeah. What? Bailey is trying doors downstairs. Yeah, Michaela would like lean back over to the other side. It's like, it's, it's pastiche. It's a twig. Um, what? Were you. Ye yes Please don't tell me it was you who s was slamming into the door. Uh, well, to be clear, it was me once, and <laughs> then it was Truman, and then many, many times it was Zalia. <laughs> At that moment, Truman walks in. 
Wait. Close this door. Very, very quickly, it goes back up, closes the door, comes back down. Uh, Michaela, are you hiding something up there? No. Uh, and she'd like, oh, like that. why are you here? Uh, 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 a criminal? There was a, a criminal about it. it accosted an old acquaintance and also Zalia, I believe. <laughs> Twig gasps and says, that must have been who you ran into after you got through the door. Those were the sounds we heard. Quite so, Zelia is fairly pissed on the other side. <laughs> Michaela's like, trying to, like she doesn't know what to do currently um <laughs> she just... Michaela, you like, seem to be having well, trouble uh, let, let us get out of this dusty stairwell uh, <laughs> pastiche is going to retreat through the door you, you all make it back to the main room the where there's way. many candles uh, there's the chandelier and other other accoutrement of the room. Uh, you see Zelia just going around testing doors. Um, Zelia, you have discovered that the southeast and the east exits are locked. Um, uh -huh. The uh, the west, uh, the one that I'm painting, like the southwest uh, corner, is locked. Um, this one is not locked, um, and then this one is already open going to this one the first one that like is open she goes through yep. so it, as it, it, it opens <laughs> and uh you are revealed a store it's just like a looks like a closet there's some pots like a barrel i guess and some uh crates that have um uh what you call it tarp kind of draped down over them and then Tuman speaks up as he walks out so well, why are you two here Ayla's gonna start looking around the storeroom. Okay, make an investigation check. Well, uh... Oops. Well, we came here to try and... Uh, so I came here as soon as... I heard that... Uh... I believe the resident of this place, Bofaga, has uh, my tome. I'm trying to get it back. And as she says that, her eyes just glance over to the south at this just... I, I see, it's like shit, just hacked to pieces door. Now, big right. hole. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, as you, as you like, glance over, you see Zoya's helpless, just oh, a gasped face. He's still in the same spot, just kind of weakly staring at Zalia as she roves around looking for more door victims. <laughs> Zalia, she while points. You're there, um, while you're in there, you don't find terribly much. Uh, what you do find seems typical of a bookbinder's uh, abode. You check one of the crates, check the barrels, they're filled with parchment and filled with um, uh, ink wells. And uh, each are filled, actually. Um, you get the sense that this is some just where they store just excess. Um, but you take a look at the, at the parchment and you feel it. It seems mm -hmm. rather rather fine parchment, um, like high quality stuff. Um, but that uh, that seems to be what's all uh, the only stuff that's in here. All right, so none of the parchment seems familiar. Okay, she's gonna go as people are talking. She's gonna wander over to the other door then. Okay. Okay, this starts like pacing back and forth. Like mm, this is this is not good. <laughs> Oh, Have you seen terrible. the ruins of this door yet? Which door? The the south door. Yeah, she's that's what she's like. Constant. That's what she's trying to kind of contemplate right now. Well, um, okay. Uh, perhaps this can still be mended if we find Bofaga and properly give an explanation 
for why his door is destroyed. <laughs> what what would that explanation be? Voaz catches Michaela's eyes as uh, she says Bufaga. Zoaz stops for a moment and says, We are in Bufaga's house? The... <laughs> the, the what? You mean to tell me <laughs> that Azalea broke down the door? <laughs> Oh, I told Korokon I wouldn't get in trouble! <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is happening, too many I'm sorry, who, who is? I would like to award Zoe as inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is happening, Chuman kind of just starts walking to the door and inspects the damage. <laughs> it's destroyed, Chuman. Completely oh, destroyed. It's been hacked. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, as I, was, I was under the assumption this was some sort of clearly very large uh, <laughs> bookbinder. I. Uh, who is this man exactly? Um, I can care out of character. He's the the word it used was mayor, correct? Or, uh, what was it? City lord? He's, he's the town leader, like the city lord. Um, okay. Uh, he's the he's the uh, boss of the um, of the book bindery, like the the big one that they treat like a okay. tourist attraction. Yeah. Um. Though I just has this awful like a gas. Like if his face could go pale, it would be he'd be a ghost right now. Looks Michaela dead in the eyes and says slowly, the, the lord of the city, the leader of the town, the leader of the most important, you know, function in this entire city, the bookbinders. He's slowly getting louder and louder. He is completely <laughs> just Michaela's face is white as a ghost. <laughs> uh, she just slumps. I notice a criminal in the floor and just sits <laughs> down. <laughs> okay. Chuman's gonna try to see if he can repair the door. Chuman, <laughs> uh, this is a huge <laughs> destruction. Like the entire like main upper upper like window part of the door is hacked apart destroyed um you could do it in three but it would take you a long time because you would have to because mending uh repairs like a single break so you have to get yeah. each piece figure out where it goes and then repair it <laughs> also remember that Zalia rotted some of it because chris and it's no longer, uh, yeah. and it's no longer there <laughs> so you, you can do it, but like as you're looking at all the pieces that are just on both sides of the, of the entryway door, <laughs> um, you get the feeling that this is not going to be a quick job. If it's possible. Okay. There you are. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes in the middle of thinking. Um, let's see. Well, we'll go to Zelia. Zelia, um, as you enter in. To the west, um, you do know, like, the sheer timing um, uh -huh. of your entry and Zalia's keen eyes <laughs> uh -huh. as she's going on her warpath. Um, you do notice a criminal. A uh, like you see, you see like the the tail poof, the 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 snow, the snowy snowball tail poof of a rabbit um, as you're entering. It uh -huh. goes. It curls around the the corner and goes down the stairs. He's casting mage hand and then following it. Okay, you've got your mage hand with you. Um, as you, as you're doing this, um, uh -huh. all of you can just conspicuously notice that uh, Zelia is out of the room, and <laughs> everyone. <clears throat> um, 
Uh, everyone, as you're just standing around, realizing the the gravity of the situation that you have encountered, the, the gravity of the situation um, in this kind of like chilly um, cave area thing. Um, two of you knowing where uh, you saw Bufogal last um, as they uh, as he traipsed through the area, um, watching watching Zayla. Yeah, Michaela would be looking directly at this door. <laughs> uh, Michaela conspicuously looking to the east door, uh, and uh, anyone looking towards the west side can see Zalia, uh soot whisper in, in hand, uh, just kind of disappear behind the door frame. Um, all of you here in your head, just this gruff kind of, uh, this gruff kind of like whisper that permeates through all of your minds, and it's, it, it goes to the time, uh, to the tune of something like, That's uh, packed. Calm down. Okay. And as this kind of re as this message, these three words, these concepts reverberate through, uh, reverberate through your minds. <clears throat> you kind of like everyone puts an extremity up to their head just from the sensation of it. And you wonder what <laughs> what in the world that was. That's where we're in tonight's session. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a mess. What do you mean?